Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, as Andrew already introduced, it's about the EcoCloud or EcoScience Research Data Cloud here. Um, it's basically a kind of a big project, it's not just technical development. So we have uh, with the Department of Environmental and Energy, uh, they are developing the essential environmental measures which we want to make available. That there is a whole a lot of work streams around species trade data, making those available, uh, getting access to the daily spatial weather grids uh, and other existing data streams. Then there's a whole work bundle around standardized modeling and analysis cap capability, which is came out of pcc -Vale, basically, to have a robust set of well-defined and reliable models. Uh, the technical, the most technical side for us is to develop a cloud platform which gives you access to compute and research and makes it easy to access your data. Basically, you have to log in, go on, and start working without caring about where the data comes from and what else is otherwise is set up with tools as available as possible. Another big part is about training and skills development. This will be part of the EcoEd and Eco Pathways programs. Uh, that bit will develop a whole lot of training material, course material, runs workshop and similar things, and also engages with industry. And the last stream is about trusted data. So that's, I'm not too familiar with that bit. My book is more about the technical side, but it's more about uh, knowledge about reliable data, with web, but it get from who is using it and which data can I use to do proper decision making. A bit of history about it. So we've released PCC Will about three to four years ago. It has been very well received. It gave us easy access to data and modeling and reduced the technical barrier to access data and use it. Um, what we have found, though, is that there's an increased demand on customizing the work and having a, an interactive workflow to work with models and data. Uh, another big use case is users want to use sensitive data, which can't be released publicly anywhere. Uh, many more users are coming on and they want to use their own data, which they have compiled or retrieved from somewhere, which is publicly inaccessible. Uh, another big thing will be that we we'll try to increase the interoperability with our systems. And all of these we took together and all the lessons we have learned through PCC Will and we're trying to put into the EcoCloud platform. So the biggest challenges with the EcoSciences is that it's a very diverse community. And it's a very diverse set of data we are going to integrate or our users want to use. So it's about species data, uh, climate data, marine data, all described in different ways and ways and often doesn't make sense to an early career researcher who comes out from an ecology background. Another big thing is portability. Uh, if you develop something, share your code, it should be able to run anywhere, not just within the eCloud platform. Uh, as I said, we want to provide the ability to run work with sensitive data, so security is a big thing here. Um, data discovery, data access, and data usage is still a very big challenge. While their work with data description and data portals has been uh, moved forward very well over the last couple of years, accessing the, actually the data and using it is still a bit of a challenge. Uh, then we want to provide some way to work with large data sets, which are impossible to download or require some HPC environment and have some way to get easy access and integrate with our projects. And as our users are using their own private data often, we need to, have, we need to integrate cloud storage support like Nextcloud, uh, Arnet, Cloud Store, or Dropbox, and similar things. 
the users we are targeting, uh, researchers, academics, undergraduates, postgraduates, uh, there will also be high-end users who know how to code and use HPC environments, but still want to share the work. Uh, big data users will be uh, included as well. And of course, to help with collaboration, there should be uh, some useful opportunities to collaborate with proper software engineers as well to optimize your code, help with coding, or even produce new third-party products on top of EcoCloud. The opportunities there are, of course, research, science, uh, the ability to publish your code or models you're developing along with your data you've used, uh, work with various workshops, software carpentry, data carpentry, provide resources to run curriculums, and all the e research community. So on the technical side, there are being three components developed. So the EcoCloud Drive, that's your easy cloud-managed online storage for code, scripts, small data sets that will always be there. So even if everything freshes, next time you come in, your last piece of work is still available. Uh, the EcoCloud Explorer, uh, which we hope will increase or help with data discovery and access, will mostly be powered by CSRO Knowledge Network. And our work there will be to provide help with uh, using the actual data through, for instance, providing code snippets. And of course, there will be the compute side of it. So at the moment, we have opted for providing Jupyter Notebooks with R, Python, and R Studio already available, and also access to virtual desktop tools at the moment provided by Coesro, which is a turn project. Three minutes, Gerhard. Sorry? Yeah. Three. So our big architecture is so the user comes in, there will be a dashboard from which you can access everything. Uh, there's a separate centralized user management, so all, all services are independent. They don't know about the users, but they use this user management service to identify and give access to various things. Uh, from there on, we can publish, clone scripts from other users, find use, find other scripts, notebooks, uh, browse through examples, how to use various data stores or do certain processing. You can explore data, try to get the data in in an easy way. Um, start a new project that essentially gives you your computer environment. You pick whatever you want, R, Python, virtual desktop, and use the tools that are available there. And these tools, uh, these environments are usually also customizable, so you can install your own software in there as well. And our tech stack, um, it's a fully, it's, it's a microservice architecture, fully OpenID Connect and OR2 enabled. So all APIs that will be offered and are available will also be accessible to third party systems. Uh, our development itself is mostly in Python and JavaScript. Uh, it's been designed to be horizontally scalable because that's just easier. Vertical scalability is still there, but there are challenges with resource allocations sometimes. And the whole system also allows to go multi-node, multi-cloud with the work. And the way we have built it up is at the bottom, there's of course OpenStack provided by the Nectar Cloud with all its services we are using. Uh, the gray box, Sahara, Noki, and Trove with we are currently not using, but certainly looking into it, how we can make them useful to our users. On top of that, the whole OpenStack infrastructure is managed by Kubernetes, which takes care of orchestration, security, all sorts of monitoring, and, all, and due to that, we can do via Kubernetes, we can autoscale everything. Uh, Kubernetes itself orchestrates everything that runs within EcoCloud. So there's our, the Jupyter Notebooks, there will be uh, web processing services, of course the web UI, the various tools we develop that provide APIs. And 
Professor of Virtual Desktop sits a bit outside of it, but will seamlessly integrate with the EcoCloud. And all the, all the work we are deploying here and that's running within the EcoCloud gives you, allows you also to access external services. At the moment, we are, uh, we are integrating we're providing tight integrations with knowledge network, uh, various data services like data.gov.au and other things. Cloud stories, as mentioned before, your Google Drive, your Dropbox, and external web processing services. That would be of high interest for us, just to offload data transfer and compute services. And that's pretty much it for me. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dan.